Today is Saturday, July 23rd. We've watched eight live hearings about the January 6th Capitol riot and former President Trump's role. Now we're getting two perspectives about the impact of these hearings. Democratic strategist Leslie Marshall is a Fox News contributor and the host of a nationally syndicated radio program, The Leslie Marshall Show. But first, you'll hear from Republican analyst Scott Jennings. He's a CNN contributor and host of the podcast Flyover Country. He previously worked for President George W. Bush and served as an advisor to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. So let's get into it. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy Special Edition Saturday, when we sit down with a different expert or celebrity every Saturday to talk about something in the news. Don't forget to tune in every Monday through Friday for our regular episodes, where we provide all the day's news in 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. It's now time for today's Special Edition Saturday. Scott, thanks for coming back on the Newsworthy. Glad to be with you. Thank you. A lot of Republicans, including former President Trump himself, have called this purely political. Do you think this was really just about politics and influencing the midterms? I mean, yeah, it's, I, mean, I mean, let's be honest, it's somewhat political, but that doesn't mean it didn't serve a purpose. And the purpose was to, to get to the bottom of, of what happened on a, on a very, very terrible day. I actually don't think this is going to have any impact on the midterms at all. Uh, in fact, I think if you look at the polling uh, nationally, by far away, economic concerns, mainly inflation, are by far the biggest issue. And nobody is really going to be voting in the midterm based on what they saw in this hearing. Where this is going to manifest itself politically is in the 2024 presidential primary. I think Donald Trump is running again. And I think Republicans watching this hearing uh, are going to have to ask themselves, should we, A, trust this person with this office again, and B, uh, can he win another election? I mean, let's be honest. He didn't win the popular vote in either election. We got wiped out in the 2018 midterm. He doesn't have a great electoral history anyway. You pile this evidence about what he did or didn't do on January 6th on top of it. If Republicans don't want to lose to Joe Biden or anybody else again. You have to ask yourself, does this does this person have a chance? Do you think enough Republican voters paid attention to these hearings for it to have that type of impact? Great question. I think a lot of Republicans have paid attention to it. I don't know that they've been glued to every minute of it, but certainly they have followed along. And I and I think how you know that that's true is if you look at the surveys that have come out uh, on Trump as it relates to the 2024 Republican primary. Uh, I mean, there was a survey in Michigan this week showing a dead heat between him and Ron DeSantis. There was a survey out of New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago showing DeSantis ahead. Uh, you see DeSantis scoring up into the 20s when matched up against Trump and other candidates nationally. I mean, you can see that Republicans, and, and look, I'm one of them, who voted for Donald Trump twice, who wanted him to succeed, who supported most, if not all, of the policy things he did as president. You can see that they are coming to grips with the fact that this person may not be our best option for 2024, and it may not be responsible for us politically or as a matter of, you know, of our you know, country's democratic institutions to put him uh, in as our nominee. Did the hearings impact who you think you'll vote for? Oh, sure. I mean, I, look, I, I, look I, I've been very clear since since it happened on January 6th. I've been vibratingly angry about this since that day. I was stunned uh, about what happened that day. I have four children under the age of 13. I have to explain to them uh, what they're seeing on their television and how this isn't supposed to be. This is not the way this is supposed to work. I work in politics. Dad works in this general space. And I try to tell them, the way it's supposed to work. And then I have to explain uh, when things happen outside of those normal contours. It makes me angry as an American, as a parent, and as a Republican who voted for Donald Trump twice, uh, that he would have plunged the country into this and that he would plunge the party into it. So what I'm looking for in 2024, I want to vote Republican and I'm going to vote Republican in the midterm. And I, I'm looking for a candidate <laughs> for president in 24 who can govern the country competently, who's going to enforce our conservative values on, on a variety of issues uh, but who also respects our democratic institutions and who's going to uphold the rule of law. That's what I'm looking for. And I think actually the Republicans have a bounty of candidates who could all uh, lay claim to all those criteria I just laid out. Do you think that Republican leaders and candidates should be addressing these January 6th hearings in a particular way or at all? Make no mistake. Anybody who runs in the presidential primary is going to have to answer a couple of questions. Number one, do you approve of what Donald Trump did on January 6th? Number two, do you think January 6th was justified? Is it justified to try to use violence and intimidation to get what you want out of the government? Number three, had you been in Mike Pence's shoes, what would you have done on that day? These are very real, simple questions that all these folks are going to have to answer, and I suspect they're going to get asked as they all jump into the race, if they jump into the race. 
depends on who you are, when you're going to have to answer it. But eventually, everybody's going to have to answer for this. Absolutely. You mentioned it earlier that inflation and the economy are some top concerns right now for voters. Do you think focusing on the economy is the key to winning in the midterms? Or how should Republican candidates be thinking about it? So if you're a Republican running for office, there's a very clear path. The universe has handed you a very clear roadmap. Focus on Joe Biden, who's in the mid to low 30s job approval. Focus on the economy, which is by far and away the top one, two, and three issue in the country. And focus on essentially being a check and balance against fully Democrat-controlled government. Remember, we don't control anything. They control the White House, the House, and the Senate. And so if you're a Republican, stay focused. The way to screw it up is to talk about other stuff or to relitigate the 2020 election, which is what Trump wants to do, and he's going to want other people to do that for him. There's an obvious roadmap, and my advice is stay on it and don't deviate. Final thought or takeaway about the January 6th hearings as we look back on them. Well, I think that we saw some people who exhibited enormous courage by stepping forward and testifying. I think we were reminded again uh, that Mike Pence uh, did the country a great service by doing his duty. I, I think at the end of the day, whether Trump or anyone else did anything criminal, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, and I know the DOJ and state of Georgia is looking at that, and, and that's fine. But I think if you're a Republican and you voted for Trump twice— you're probably having an impulse like, well, I don't want to I don't want to give in to the Democrats here. I don't want to let them feel like I don't want to feel like I'm I'm letting them win this one. But I think you should look at it this way. You voted for him. maybe you gave him money. Maybe you knocked on doors. You gave him your best effort. Did he give you his best effort? And I think on these hearings, we learned that he did not. And I'll just say one final issue about it. The president of the United States has very little job instructions in the Constitution, but some of it comes in his oath of office. And in the oath of office, you raise your hand and you say, I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution to the best of my ability. And I don't know how you could look at January 6th and all the evidence that's been prevented and come to the conclusion that Donald Trump did anything other than violate his oath of office. So if he violated it once, as Republicans, are we responsible to keep him from doing that again? I think the answer is yes. And I think we've got plenty of candidates who can do everything you want on policy, on fighting the media, on fighting the Democrats, whatever, but don't carry the stain of having violated their oath of office. When the Constitution needed the president of the United States, he was not there for it and may in fact have been leading the charge against it. I don't think we should reward him with another nomination of our party. Of course, not every Republican agrees with Scott Jennings. Former President Trump himself has said on his social media platform, Truth Social, that the committee is, quote, a fraud and disgrace to America, pointing out that there are no cross-examinations and no opposing witnesses. Still ahead, we welcome Democratic strategist Leslie Marshall. She shares her take on what the January 6th hearings were supposed to be about, why she thinks more people tuned in to watch than originally predicted, and the hearings' potential impact come November. But first, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We all know how powerful our brains are. They control everything we do. So why not treat our minds with the care they deserve? I've experienced it myself, that when I invest the time and effort into better understanding what's going on in my mind and how to make sure I'm caring for it properly, it has a positive impact on the way I experience all of life. I show up for my family better. I run my business better. And I take care of myself better. And part of that caring for my mind is through therapy. Having a professional to talk things out with is surprisingly helpful. And one convenient way to try therapy is through BetterHelp. It offers video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. So you can be face-to-face -face on video if you want, or you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And it's easy to switch and request a new therapist if you don't click with the first one right away. Plus, our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Newsworthy. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash Newsworthy. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Rothy's. I am constantly chasing around my one-year-old these days, so I need shoes that can keep up with me. Comfort is my top priority. But, of course, I also would like to look my best. Well, with Rothy's, I get the best of both worlds. I get comfort for my feet and the type of style that turns heads. They're the perfect shoes for commuting, traveling, and just everyday life when you want to both feel and look great. Plus, I really appreciate that all of my Rothy shoes can be worn with pretty much everything. I can dress them down with yoga pants or dress them up for a night out. 
which by the way is especially helpful for travel because other shoes take up way too much space in your suitcase. The other wonderful thing about Rothy's is how serious the company is about sustainability. All of their products are knit with thread made from plastic water bottles. So they've repurposed around 125 million water bottles so far. Your new favorite shoes are waiting. Discover the versatile styles you can wear absolutely anywhere and get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy for $20 off your first order. Okay, now to my conversation with Democratic strategist and Fox News contributor, Leslie Marshall. Leslie, thank you so much for coming on The Newsworthy. Oh, it's great to be here. Anything particular that really stood out to you the most from these hearings? Yes, just how coordinated an effort it was and how there was a goal by some the Proud Boys, for example, uh, to create and wreak havoc and to be violent. Republicans were saying this was tourism and Republicans were saying, you know, people didn't have weapons. Well, we found that not to be true. There were a lot more connecting of the dots, how much planning, uh, how much was the former president and people around the former president involved in what were people saying. And what do you think the impact will be for Democrats come November and the midterms? Although people will disagree with me on this, it, it wasn't supposed to be political. This committee was about, here are the facts. You need to know the facts. To answer your question, what does this do for Democrats in the midterms? I don't think it changes the outcome of the overall picture, which is most likely the House will change hands and you know Republicans will take the House. That historically happens without January 6th happening, without January 6th hearings happening, because the party in power usually loses uh, an average of 30 or 40 seats in the House and the party that is not in power, their opposition takes over. You know, that that's just historical. If it's not about politics, do you think it's more about public perception or more about the public record? Like, what is the lasting impact of these hearings? I think it's just about the knowledge is power and giving the American people the knowledge of the facts. Because that's what, I mean, when you have somebody sitting there and say, look, I was a member of the Proud Boys and, you know, there were weapons. Uh, you know, we did plan this. Uh, we were taking our cues from the president. You know, this isn't just some like, you know, left wing conspiracy on social media. You're hearing actual testimony from people that were there. You're hearing actual testimony from people that worked in the White House under the president. And I think what it does is it peels back the curtain at Oz. And I do feel it will affect uh, some people's uh, votes. I know in one national poll by ABC News and Ipsos back in June, about two thirds of adults said they were not paying much attention to the January 6th hearings and half said the hearings would not make any difference in how they vote. So what are you seeing? Do, do you think that's true? Well, what we saw were the numbers on the networks of people that were tuning in and uh, that didn't reflect that poll. You know, people will say, well, I'm not going to tune in. But I, I don't know if it's like when we drive by an accident and we look, the curiosity, the morbid curiosity, maybe. Um, but more people tuned in, actually, than people said. And speaking of numbers rising, we're seeing that in uh, the polls that more and more people do not feel Donald Trump should run again. More and more people do not feel Donald Trump should run again specifically because of this. And that there are some races in some states, specifically battleground states, um, where this is mattering more to voters. It certainly does not um, trump, no pun intended, the economy, uh, which is uh, top of mind and probably items one through five at this point, uh, you know, for voters. Uh, but it matters more now than it did. I think the proof is in, you know, the, the pudding and the pudding are these numbers that more people started to tune in. People actually started to change their minds. And for some, not a lot, uh, it will weigh in on their decision as voters in the midterms. So, of course, this committee of lawmakers cannot bring criminal charges, but it has been reported that the Justice Department is at least paying attention. Any thoughts on whether former President Trump or really anyone else other than the rioters that have already faced charges might also face criminal charges? The Justice Department doesn't need this committee to bring charges, and they don't need this committee and shouldn't need this committee to do their homework and to do their research. So some would say if they were going to bring charges, they would have been brought. Like you said, they are watching. I don't 
know what they're watching for, because as the Department of Justice, they absolutely have the legal right, the authority and the bank account um, to go out there and do this uh, on their own. So certainly the question is, you know, why haven't they already? And if they haven't already, does that mean they never will? I don't know the answer to that, but I would tend to think that, you know, there may be uh, no charges coming to Donald Trump as a result of this, as I know some people uh, on the left, the far left, uh, would hope. Separate from the hearings for a moment, the economy and inflation are at least some of the top issues among voters. And one of the arguments from Republicans during these hearings is that why are we paying attention to these hearings when some of those other issues in the country are going on? What's your take on that? Oh, please. If we elected officials not to be able to walk and chew gum at the same Mm -hmm. time, um, you know, I mean, we we all know there's more than one thing going on. While the January 6th committee has been presenting its findings, we had gun control uh, on a bipartisan level, gun control legislation that was passed. They're looking at right now passing, you know, a semiconductor bill, which again would be uh, bipartisan, you know, before they break. Final thought or takeaway about these hearings. I actually am glad that they had the hearings because I wanted to know the truth. And you can't get the truth in sound bites or videos that you see on the news or online. You really just need to hear from the people that were actually there, that were in those rooms that were privy to and present at those discussions and conversations, it puts it into context. I think that's best for the United States of America. I think it's essential that even if it's ugly, that we hear and we see the truth. Well, thanks so much to both of our guests today for sharing their opinions and analysis. Be sure to follow them on social media for more of their insights and check out the links in today's episode notes. We'll, of course, keep you updated if anything else comes out related to the January 6th investigation, along with all the other news you need to know each day during our regular 10-minute news roundups brought to you in our signature fast, fair, fun style. Our regular news roundups are available every weekday beginning at 4 a.m. Eastern. So we'll be back on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend.